welcome back to EE for Everyone. In the last video, we talked about transistors, more specifically, BJTs. Along the path of our discussion, I got a little distracted and started talking about Schottky diodes. So, I figured that I'd follow up and talk about diodes explaining what they do. Perhaps along the way I'll get distracted and finish talking about transistors. So, diodes. When first thinking about diodes, imagine someone holding a switch which controls a gate. You tell this person to turn the switch on when people are walking through the gate one way, and turn the switch off when people are trying to walk the other way. This works well because people only ever try to move one direction at a time. However, one day these smart people decide that instead of walking just one way, they would change direction as they walk through the gate. Now, our switch operator does their best, but one or two one or two people typically slip past the gate as it's closing. If you substitute electrons for the people in the story and a diode as the gate controller, this describes a lot about how a diode works. The physical construction of a diode is doped silicon with one PN junction. This usually produces a forward voltage of near 0.7 volts. The forward voltage is the voltage that must be exceeded before the diode conducts. A Schottky diode is a very similar device but it's tweaked. Instead of a PN junction, it contains a metal silicon junction. This allows for the creation of a smaller depletion region and a smaller forward voltage. Schottky diodes typically have a faster switching time as well. That is, they can close the gate faster than a traditional silicon diode. Ultimately, this difference in construction can allow a Schottky diode to perform more like an ideal diode in certain situations. These are generally preferred when creating switch mode power supplies. When using diodes, it's always important to keep the reverse voltage rating in mind and think about the maximum reverse voltage your circuit may apply to your diodes. Exceeding this rating will cause your diodes to break down and allow large quantities of current to flow in a direction you may not have expected. Depending on the type of diode, causing a diode to break down can permanently damage the device. Let's look at a simple situation that demonstrates the differences between a silicon and Schottky diode. We have two diodes, one silicon rectifier diode and one Schottky diode. The Schottky diode is D1 and the silicon diode is D2. The applied waveform is a pulse source stepping from negative 20 volts to 20 volts at a frequency of 100 kilohertz. This voltage is fed through the two diodes into their corresponding loads. Let's begin this comparison by plotting the current through each diode. Notice that there is some non-ideal behavior shown when the diodes are turning on and off. Let's take a closer look at where these diodes are turning off. Having zoomed in, it is clear that D2 the silicon diode is letting more reverse current pass through than D1. Okay, but what does this mean for the reverse voltage applied to the two load resistors? It appears there is a much larger reverse voltage applied to R2 than R1. In this case, it looks like the silicon diode is allowing a reverse voltage of about negative three volts and the Schottky diode is allowing about negative one volt. This larger voltage and larger current is expected for the silicon diode since we expect that a Schottky diode should generally turn off faster than a silicon one. Turning off faster means letting less energy through and applying less reverse voltage and reverse current to the load. As a final comparison point, let's look at the difference in the forward voltage and power dissipated by the two diodes. You can see the silicon diode plotted in yellow and the Schottky diode plotted in red. Note that since these diodes are not conducting during the reverse part of the applied voltage, we can see the negative 20 volts clearly marked in the plot. However, the two distinctly different forward voltages are also visible. Let's zoom in on that. The forward voltage of the Schottky diode appears to be near 0.4 volts when conducting approximately 200 milliamps through it. 
which the forward voltage of the silicon diode appears to be near 0.7 volts. By multiplying these forward voltages with the currents passing through them, we can take a look at what this means for the power dissipated by the diodes. By holding control and clicking on the trace name, the average power dissipated by the Schottky diode can be seen as 40.7 milliwatts. The same calculation for the silicon diode shows an average power of 69.7 milliwatts. Given the same thermal conductivity, this means that our silicon diode would be dissipating 41% less heat than its silicon counterpart, and therefore have a temperature rise 41% smaller than its silicon counterpart. Ultimately, this is what makes Schottky diodes advantageous for most switch mode power supply designs. The less power dissipated in a diode, the more efficient it is. Another step up from using an efficient diode in a switch mode power supply would be to leverage something called synchronous rectification, where a transistor, typically a MOSFET, is substituted for the rectifying diode. We have a lot to talk about before we can discuss that in detail, but we'll get there soon enough. For now, remember the basic idea of what a diode is meant to do, and consider how you might be able to apply that idea to create circuits that can serve as basic logic functions or convert AC to DC. I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!